Hi. The final step that is required before you can do electron microscopy on your sample is that you put an electric conducting thin layer that coats the surface of the sample. Otherwise you will get problem. In order to make this layer you can use different kind of machines but the most co common ones are a carbon evaporator like this one or a gold sputtering machine like this one. These are the most common ones. You can cope with other metals or you can use different techniques, but I think these ones represent the most common ones. Today I'm going to show you how both these machines work, and in order to do that we need some samples. So here, here I have a few samples that's already been prepared. This one, for example, is a plastic embedded sample that's been polished. This one I'm going to sputter gold on with this machine. And here I have a smaller one. This is a small sample. This one I will show you the, the carbon evaporator on. Before you can use the sample inside the microscope or any one of these two machines, you need to mount a sample holder on it that holds the piece inside the machines. Here is the sample holder. A small uh, aluminum cylindrical dish. Uh, on the bottom here you have a smaller cylinder that actually is, uh, is a fixation in the machine. So the machine will hold it like this. And then this plate will be grounded and conduct the ele electric charges away. So the idea is when to mount this sample on top and create an electric pathway of the charges so it will be grounded off for art. And to do that we use conductive tape like this. This has a, a adhesive glue on both sides. So we fixate this on top and then we can fixate the, the sample on top of that. So first I start with the carbon tape and remove this top coating film, like so. Then we can attach this carbon tape on top of the sample holder that will attach to the sample. So, but before we put this on we will use the copper foil also. And then I check what region of interest on the sample that I'm going to study. And then I put this tape as close to it as possible. So I put it here straight across. And then I make sure that it, this tape goes around onto the bottom of the edge, like this. So. And then we put that on top of, of the carbon tape. So. Then I guaranteed a nice electric conductive pathway onto the top of the surface. So the next step will be to carbon coat it or gold sputter this. That will make the final conduction on top of the surface here. Here I have the sample that we're going to evaporate the carbon. So then I, you see it's already been mounted on this mounting piece of the SM, so that will fit inside here. So here I put in my sample. Like so. Here you can see the top mounting piece of the chamber of the system. This one contains the carbon rods. So here one carbon rod is visible. The other one that's supposed to be on this side we haven't made yet, so I will do that and show you now. You can see that this is spring-loaded, so when the carbon rod fits inside here, it will make a good contact of the electric current. So here I have a carbon rod. What you start by doing is you, you grind off the top like this, so it becomes flat. Then you take this special mounting piece here. This one is to create the right dimension of the thing that will be evaporated. So this is grinding off the top of the carbon rod. So you continue by doing this and then you will get a little smaller needle on top of the carbon rod. And that is the actual carbon that is going to be evaporated. You see now we have a smaller needle tip shaped on top of it. That is the carbon that's going to be evaporated. We pull back the spring a little, tighten the screw, like so, and now you see it's making contact here. So now everything is set up to and can be put inside the chamber and we can run the machine. So, connect the electric connectors, and then we're going to start up the machine. So first I turn on the machine and then I set on the vacuum pump. This vacuum system contains of two things, 
both a rotor pump that creates the basic vacuum and then a turbo pump here that creates the final vacuum. So here is the vacuum meter. We're going to wait a while so we get a little bit better vacuum before we start the turbo pump. Okay, I think this pressure is good enough to turn on the turbo pump now. This scale shows the speed of the turbo pump. We're going to wait until it's full. It takes a few minutes before we reach the final vacuum. This machine is a multi-purpose machine. It can also evaporate metals instead of carbon. And, and in order to do that, you change this top piece. So here I have a different top piece. And instead of these uh, carbon rods at the top here, you have this metallic cage here. And in here you can put a metallic piece, like a gold piece, for example. And then the electric current will heat up this cage and evaporate gold on top of the sample instead. This is useful if you don't want carbon, for example. But uh, it is not as controllable as with the gold sputter machine, where you can control the thickness also. So now I reach full speed at the turbo pump, and the vacuum has become good. The next thing is to start the rotating of the sample. Now the sample rotates around, and that will make the carbon that will be evaporated more evenly distributed across the sample surface. Then we will outgas. We press here, and we turn on this current full and then back. You will see a light here now. Like so. And then we evaporate by pressing this knob. Now you will see a flash. I usually do this twice to get a better carbon layer. Out gas, on, off, evaporate. Like so. Now we have evaporated the sample with carbon. So now we're going to shut down the system, but we will turn off the vacuum system, and that will also take a few minutes. That is very important, because if you let air inside while this turbo pump is going at full speed, it will crash instantly. You should at least wait until you have three diodes here on the scale, or less. So now I've reached three diodes on the scale here, so now the pump has sort of stopped, and we can t vent the chamber and let air inside. Okay, our sample is finished. Now let's instead try the gold sputtering machine and see how that one works. This gold sputtering machine works sort of similar as the carbon evaporator. You can see that it has sort of the same kind of chamber, the vacuum system here. And uh, the thing that's different is that on top of here you have a gold sputtering target. And when you start this machine up, you create a an uh, electric arc inside here that shoots off gold from this target. So it sputter off gold, and that gold coats everything inside the chamber. So then you can get a thin layer of gold on your sample. All right, let's put it in now, like so. You can also check the bottom here. This one here, you have a scale that says 50 millimeter now. And that is the height from, the, or, or the distance from the gold sputtering target up here. If you have the, a different distance, then that will ha have an effect on the thickness of the coating. So if you have calibrated this, it's uh, important that you keep the same here. Otherwise, you have, the thickness will be unknown. So we start by turning on the gas here. That's the argon gas. Turn on the machine, and then we'll start to pump the chamber. Here you can see the pressure inside the chamber, and we want to come down to this range. That's sort of below 10 to the minus 1 millibar. You 
you can also see that because we are cooling the system here with the cooling water, the temperature now has dropped to 23 degrees. That is okay. The next step now is to flush the chamber with argon gas. We do that by pressing this rinsing button. You can see it lets argon in because pressure goes up. And we do that several times. Like so. One nice thing with this machine is that the thickness of this coating layer that you achieve is depending on how long the sample is inside the chamber. So by setting the time here, you can actually control this quite good. That you can compare to a carbon evaporator, which is sort of like a one-shot thing. You shoot off the carbon rod and then you get some kind of carbon layer on top of the sample. The thickness is not very well controlled. I think this is good. Now the pressure is better than 10 to the minus 1. So now we can turn on the high voltage. But before we do that, make sure that this uh, shutter is closed. So I have it in closed position. Otherwise it will start sputtering immediately. High voltage go on and you can see that the current here stays 60 milliampere. You can, re you can choose to change this value if you like. And, but today I'm going to use 60 milliampere. Usually when you create a, this thin sputtered layer on top of the surface, it is very thin, a few nanometers to a few tens perhaps. If you look at the sample with your eye, it will sort of just look a barely little goldish in color. Most of it will still be quite transparent. But it's still enough for the, for the electron microscopy session. But uh, in order to demonstrate the effect, you can create an even thicker amount of gold. So now I will also show you that on this machine. I create a thick gold layer so it will actually look goldish in surface. I set the meter for 100 seconds at 60 milliampere. That will create a quite thick layer. Here you can control the rotation of the sample. The gold will come from the top down on the sample. So if you have things at the sides that you need to coat, if the surface is very rough, rotating improves that. And then we're ready. Just open here and it will coat it with gold. You can see the time starts here and will count. And after that, it will automatically shut down. So now the gold is being sputtered on top of the sample. Now we turn off the machine and let air inside and release the sample. And we're ready. Here is our gold coated sample. All right, I think that's it. Now I demonstrated how to make these conductive layers that's required on top of the sample. I both demonstrated the carbon evaporator and the gold sputtering machine. Hope it helped you. See you.